Do you know why most people fail in sobriety and addiction recovery? Because it's hard. It can be really hard. The real reason we do drugs, drink, overeat, smoke, watch porn, go shopping is that we find it hard to cope with the real problem, which is our minds, our thinking. And in most cases, there is some level of stress involved. And stress could be a killer. If it's not managed on some level, it can lead to all kinds of health problems and not just emotional health, but physical health too and behavioral problems like addiction and alcoholism. Just so you don't feel like a complete failure and think that you're the only one dealing with this, I will tell you that you are not it's not confined to addiction and alcoholism. It's not confined to men or women or black or white or whatever. It exists in everybody. And it's part of what I call the human condition. Hi, I'm Dennis Berry, best-selling author and life coach for addiction recovery, alcoholism, and life mastery. Every one of us has stress on some level. Our brains are designed to help us think. They're actually doing their job by making us think about things to help keep us safe. But we end up overthinking about just about everything. Well, if you're like me and my funky brain. But stress produces a chemical called cortisol. It isn't all bad, actually. It's affectionately known as nature's built-in alarm system. It works with different parts of your brain to help you control your mood, your motivations, and your fears. It does have some good functions, too. But for our purposes here, we're going to talk about the negative effects of stress in recovery. It'll make you sick. It can lead to insomnia, anxiety, depression, heart disease, and a bunch of other crap. The real issue here is stress management. So how do we do that? Honestly, it isn't much different than dealing with other problems, but of course there needs to be a willingness to make changes or take actions to deal with it. A willingness to open up and talk about what the real problem is and a willingness to work towards changing your subconscious minds, which drive over 80% of our behaviors. So I was working with a client a while ago who was drinking about a pint of whiskey every night and he wasn't sure how or why it was happening. He wasn't really like thinking about drinking all day. He would get home from work, talk, play with the kids, have nice conversations with his wife and he would still get his work done but he was drinking a pint of whiskey every day. So he was very calm and friendly. He was usually smiling. He wasn't overweight and everything seemed to be okay on the outside but when we were talking about his drinking, I asked him about where he went to school. And I asked if he had a great childhood. And when I asked about his dad, he flipped out on me. He started yelling at me saying it was none of my business and that we needed to stop talking about his dad right now. So we stopped talking about it immediately and continued to talk about his drinking. So the next session when he got here, he said that I don't want to talk about my dad for a whole nother session. And I said, we didn't. We only talked about him for about 20 seconds. And he said, what? So we started talking about his dad. Turns out that growing up, his dad was deep in debt, very outwardly angry, and although he was a hard worker, he drank every night. Sound familiar? Interesting. So no matter how hard we try, we almost always end up being like the very people we were fighting so hard to avoid being like our parents. And I love my mom and dad, I'm just saying. So anyway, after that incident, we realized a whole bunch of stuff, and he hasn't had a drink since that day, about three years ago now, but we, never even talked about the drinking anymore because it wasn't even the real problem. It was what he was doing to cope with the real problem, which was his dad, it is past, and things that he had unresolved issues about. So we had to address those, and now the drinking problems went away, and he's paid off his debt. We realized he had a bunch of debt, and he had some really bad spending habits. So we got that under control, and now he has no debt, and he just paid his house down like 50%. And while he didn't yell at his wife or kids all that much, he was bottling it all up inside and it was making him sick. Remember that cortisol, that stress that isn't managed makes you sick. So now he's managing his emotions better with emotional regulation. He's debt free, he's sober and he's healthier than he has been in years. And his relationship is going really well too. So this is a perfect example of having damaging ideas and beliefs deep, deep down inside that are hidden for years or even decades that are driving our behaviors and in many cases, our lives right into the ground. So we did some work on reprogramming his mind and his behaviors, which he committed to. And that commitment is what it takes to change those behaviors. So there are a bunch of different things we did, but it included things like writing and meditating and emotional regulation and really doing a bunch of things you don't want to do on a daily basis. And when you make those changes, things change. So anyway, if this resonates with you at all, and you're tired of struggling 
give me a call. I know what it's like to feel hopeless and helpless and not know where to turn or what to do to change your life around. Let's just talk for a little bit. It's free. I'm sending you guys a lot of love and good vibes. Be safe out there. Talk to you soon.